What is going on? My name is Psyche and welcome back to Dead Cells. So the new patch is finally here. This is the 2.3 update, also known as the Whack-A-Mole update. And today I wanted to kind of give you guys my thoughts about the new changes, the new additions to the game such as the weapons and the mutations, and just my general take on the new update overall. So I played a lot of the game when it was still in the beta stages, so um, I haven't played too much of it in the full release, though from what I can tell, not a lot has changed. So hopefully the information that I will give will be accurate. So I'm going to start by talking about the new weapons, and then the new mutations, and then finally I will go over the balance changes. So without further ado, let's get started. So first off, to start off with the new weapons, we have the Oven Axe. This is a survival only weapon, and it swings very very slowly. In fact, if you look at every other weapon in existence in the game right now, this is probably as slow as it's going to get. So how the Oven Axe works is that it starts to crit on the 4th hit and onwards as long as you can keep up the combo. This is an interesting mindset because if you're using this weapon, you'll be more focused on trying to land the hits at all as opposed to actually maximizing DPS. Now this weapon was buffed when it was in beta, they made the range slightly bigger, and there is more time for you to actually chain together hits. So right off the bat, I can feel that this is going to be somewhat tricky to make it work, but I will try to make it work and let you guys know how I feel about it. And the second new weapon is called the Toothpick. This is also survival only, and just like the Oven Axe, it also swings very slowly. However, you can charge it up for a critical hit that also breaks the club. And then once it breaks, you are just left with the stub area and you have to wait for it to come back. Now originally, I thought that if you break it, it would actually make it swing faster since uh, it's smaller and you'll probably be able to do something with it, I don't know. Now what I'm really concerned is the charge up attack because at least I don't think they've changed it because this one hit the charge up is very very slow and I don't think it's very viable. Um, again, the main problem with a lot of the survival melee weapons is that it's hard to break through the boss damage cap. So at least in this version of the game, I think the toothpick will have some trouble, especially against bosses. And last but not least, the new weapons is the tombstone. This is also survival only, and this is actually my favorite one from the three. Now the tombstone was completely reworked from its alpha counterpart, so now when you kill an enemy with the third hit, it quote unquote dooms the other enemies on the screen, where they take some damage after a delayed timing. If the doom damage also kills an enemy, then other enemies will get an additional instance of doom, which it takes a decreased amount of doom damage as opposed to before. So basically, this is exactly the same as Ares Boons from Hades, if anyone's played that game. In fact, even the keywords and the mechanics are exactly the same. So my theory with this weapon is that if you run it at 4 slash 5 BC, what you can do is use your homunculus room, so the one where you detach your head, you lure one enemy from a crowd of enemies towards you, and then you kill it with the tombstone, and then it dooms all of the other enemies on the screen, I think this is an interesting playstyle, though I still think that it's not very viable in bosses, though we will have to see. So overall, I can't exactly say I'm all that excited about these new weapons. I think survival struggles a lot, especially when it comes to slow melee weapons, though I am going to have to play with it a bit more. I mean, I'm always excited about having new content, so I will let you guys know after I play with them a bit more to let you guys know what I think of them. So moving to the newest mutations, there are three. With the addition of these three mutations, it brings the total amount of brutality mutations to 12, tactics 12 as well, survival 13, and colorless 12. So first off, let's start with the tactics mutations. The first one is called Barbed Tips. I play with it in beta, as you can see from the background footage, it is actually very very powerful. I originally thought it worked with Endless Quiver, but that weapon, it doesn't actually count as arrows since it's kind of endless, and here I thought it might actually be viable. Anyways, anything that fires fast can benefit from this, such as Quick Bow, Multiple Nox Bow, or any type of dual bind range setup. This is also an indirect buff to Sonic Carbine, though it is still a bit questionable. I mean, if I were to run Barb Tips, I'll probably just run something else. Sonic Carbine is really just a meme. Next up, we have Point Blank. Now this mutation actually received a massive buff in the latest beta patch. And it's interesting that it increases the damage as a percentage as opposed to just a flat 
damage increase. Now, the wording on this one is a bit confusing. It states that close ranged ranged attacks deal additional damage. So it doesn't actually work with the melee weapons, such as Snake Fangs. It actually has to come from a ranged weapon. So the best items that I imagine that can benefit from point blank would be infantry bow or maybe even electric whip because that weapon is also counted as a ranged weapon. Now honestly, again, I think any bow can work. The condition of point blank is definitely easier to pull off as opposed to tranquility because let's be honest, you'll definitely be nearby an enemy as opposed to being far away from them. Though this is the one mutation I haven't really tried out, especially with the newest buff, so I will try it out later and let you guys know what I think. And finally, to end off the new mutations, we have No Mercy. This is a colorless mutation, and to my surprise, it actually doesn't scale with your stats. So how it works is that it will execute normal enemies under 15% health, and I think for bosses, they change it to 7%. However, it doesn't matter how many stats you have, this percentage does not increase or decrease. The 15 and 7% execution numbers stays as it is for all of your runs. So I think this might be very, very useful, especially in the early game, where you need some support to make some of the weapons more viable, such as magic missiles. And then you might swap it back for something else once you become a bit more powerful, because a lot of weapons are kind of weak, especially in the early game. But once you get into the later sections and you get a lot of scroll stats, they can deal much more damage than before. So I've seen some people say that you might want to run this with slow builds, such as slow melee weapons. Um, from my experience, it doesn't actually work out that well, because if you don't land in the threshold, the execution threshold, then you're gonna have to swing your weapon one more time, which is very, very tiring. So I think in terms of viability, I think No Mercy works best with fast builds. Both melee or range can work, so from the background footage, you'll see that Bob's Tips actually works very well with No Mercy. I just stick like a couple arrows into an enemy, it takes some DOT damage from Barb Tips, and then it gets executed. So, very very interesting combination. And there we have it for the new mutations. Finally, we're gonna move on forwards to the balance changes of the new update. First of all is the difficulty change. Now, they didn't really change anything about this new system in the beta patch, so my opinion is still the same as my video on the alpha patch of the update. The game progression system feels a bit more linear as opposed to before, where 2BC and 4BC represented big increases in difficulty. Now the road to 5BC is a lot smoother, which I am a fan of. But overall, not too much to say about this new difficulty change. I played one game on 3BC, and in that run, I got my first minor fast charge after the first boss, and the second one came before the second. So nothing too much to say about the balance changes. I think it's a great addition to the game. And finally, we have a change to legendary items. So I got this one wrong in my thoughts about the alpha version of the patch. So how legendary items work now is that it scales off from the two colors that you have the most of. So let's say you have 25, 5 and 5 in your stats, then when you pick up a legendary item, it will scale as if you had 30 stats, because 25 plus 5, those are your two highest stats, and it will scale off of those. So if you have 7, 7, and 7 in all three of your stats, and if you pick up a legendary item, it will scale as if you have 14 scrolls. So I definitely think this makes legendary items a lot more viable. Um, in addition to having the benefits of legendary items, such as better affixes and a lower reroll cost. I mean, I don't normally take legendary items in my runs, so I think this will definitely shake up the metagame quite a bit. And finally, there were a bunch of bug fixes, so I'm not really gonna talk about those. But yeah, that's it for the patch. I mean, what do you all think? Do you think the new weapons and the mutations are good? Are they the worst idea that the devs have ever come up with? Let me know in the comments. So in the later weeks, I will definitely be doing some runs with these new items as well as the mutations. Definitely interested to see how they will work. This has been it for me today. Um, this has been my review on the latest 2.3 patch, so hopefully you've enjoyed it. There will be a lot of content coming out in the weeks, so stay tuned for that, and thanks for watching, guys.